The vision has always been to help millions of people from around the globe. And this is truly an international company. We are creating freedom in the lives of others, and we're doing it in a very creative way. So I'm excited to be able to have this opportunity to be able to share something special with you. If we can play a very special video by David Frey. David Fry. Back in the late 80s, I was a, a, a missionary in the country of Bolivia. And Bolivia is the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere behind Haiti. And so uh, Bolivia is a landlocked country, and so they don't have a lot of commerce going internationally. And so it really has driven them to a lot of poverty. And the, but the people were just beautiful people, especially the children. Sometimes work in the mission field was very, very difficult, and I would come home at the end of the day uh, just um, sometimes frustrated and sometimes very, very tired. But when I'd see their children and they'd come up and give me a hug, my heart just melted. And unfortunately, a lot of those children weren't able to get an education. And my heart really broke for them because the schools, even if there was a school in, the, in their local area, were just too far for them to go to. So I told myself, I said, someday, someday, I am going to build a school for these children. Someday I'm gonna help these kids get a really good education. And so that night I sat down and I actually drew a school in my mind's eye. I drew it down and uh, I kept that piece of paper. It became a symbol to me of the promise that I had made to myself to eventually build a school for these young children, and I never forgot that promise. When I came home, uh, it was back in 1989, I framed that and I put it up in my kitchen so that every day I would be able to look at that little picture that I drew and remind myself of the promise that I made to go and help these children. In 2007, uh, at the National Convention, uh, Cody Bateman, the founder of Send Out Cards, um, scheduled a, a party called Back to the Future. And uh, what he wanted to do from that party, I believe, is to help give us a vision of where we could be in five years and where we should be and, and help us to develop our own I am statements. I decided that my new I am statement would be, I am a third world school builder. But again, even after that party, I looked at that uh, thing uh, on my kitchen wall, that drawing, and I said next year, and finally, um, I passed by it one night, one evening, and I said, there's no more next years. There's only this year. In this year, I am going to become a third world school builder. The place where we built this first school is on what's called an IDP camp, and IDP stands, I think, for Interdisplaced People because back in uh, uh, 2008, Kenya had these elections that, that resulted in a lot of tribal warfare and people were getting slaughtered and so the government moved uh, these people to different parts of the country to keep them safe. There were no schools, there were no medical facilities, there was no nothing there. And that's where we decided to build our first school. And the school that we built has 10 classrooms it holds about 50 to 60 students in every classroom. That means over 500 children will now be getting an education. And a lot of times we do two shifts, so that, that would mean over 1,000 young children who weren't getting an education now have an opportunity to make something for themselves in the country of Kenya. And um, we went over there just recently for the inauguration. It just took my breath away. It was such an amazing experience. When we arrived, there were thousands, not hundreds, but thousands of Kenyans arriving to celebrate the inauguration of the school. It meant a piece of hope for them, for these refugees, that now they're able to send their children to school and get a good education.
because of the freedom that I've received through Send Out Cards, they are benefiting and they are receiving freedom through their education. And it's going to be able to take the shackles off of them and be able to make something of themselves and be able to have a home of their own, a job, a, uh, an education, and they'll be able to raise their children not in the poverty that they grew up in. And so the, the freedom that Send Out Cards has given to me, I've been able to pass along to other people and also to people in a, in a different country. And <laughs> what better thing is there in life, truly, what better thing is there to do? I tell you, that is so wonderful. David is backstage there, and I know it's not part of the script. David, if you can just stick, just stand out and wave your hand, please. That is wonderful. 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 You know, Cody talks, Cody talks about going with your promptings all the time. And, and of course, we rehearsed and just watching the video. And I looked at you backstage, and something went through my heart. And I said, that's wonderful. My grandmother used to say, it's not what goes on in the afterlife. It's what you do here in this world that matters in your life. And I'm telling you, you're doing a wonderful thing. Thank you, Linda. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to David. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, thank you very much. It's, I've never seen that video before. That was the first time it moves even me. And, and I just want to say before I start saying anything that I'm not the only one who does this type of stuff. If you guys knew how much money Jordan Adler gives to charities, I think you'd be really impressed. If you knew how DeMar Zimmerman is sending kids to 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 universities in South Africa, you would be impressed. And so there's a lot of people here. I talked to another guy who's sending, who's helping uh, schools in Nepal. There's a lot of people here, and I'm just one little small cog in a big wheel, so I thank you. Um, so the video that you just saw is really only just a, a part of the story of how I became a third world school builder. So today I'd like to tell you the rest of the story. It's a very private story. In fact, I've only shared this story publicly one time that I can remember that it was with a very small group at an executive retreat uh, down in, in, I believe it was Louisiana or Orlando. Um, I didn't tell my wife about this story um, until we were on our way to our 20th year high school reunion. I mean, that's the truth. And, and the reason I didn't tell her was because I was a totally different person by then. Um, there was another David Fry and he had died. But I figured that she would find out from someone at the reunion about it. So I thought it would better be me she found out than somebody else. And sure enough, you know, she did hear some stuff. Uh, by the way, that night at my high school reunion, I was voted the most changed alumni. And you're going to find out why in just a moment. This is also the story of my, my first I am statement. You see, at the time, I didn't even know what an I am statement was. But nonetheless, it changed my life forever. You see, when I was a young child, my mother had a terminal disease. Most of my memories of her were in the hospital. When I was only seven years old, she passed away. 
She left my dad with five kids and I was the youngest. And as you can imagine, my mother's death devastated me. I was just a little boy. I didn't have a mom anymore. And my dad, he owned a gas station. He opened it up and shut it down. He worked 14 hours a day, so I didn't see him much. A couple years later, my dad married someone who became my stepmom, and we got along like oil and water. It was not good. It was so bad that I, I dreaded coming home at night. I did not want to come home. And in order to escape from that life, I started doing drugs at a very young age. The worse I felt, the more drugs I took, which put my life in a downward spiral. Eventually, I even started to sell drugs as well. And I quickly became the biggest drug dealer in my high school and eventually the local area. It was, it was not good. At only 17 years of age, I was a waste case. I mean, many days I'd walk around in a daze wondering who I was and where I was. I eventually couldn't bear living in my home anymore, so I moved into my car. Yeah, I was 17 year old, lived in my car. I owned this uh, 69 Ford Rambler, and I slept in the back seat and took showers at my friend's house. And I remember in this car, you could actually put the seats all the way forward. You know, they reclined all the way forward so I could stretch out my six foot three frame in the back seat. And then just when you think things couldn't get worse, I turned to crime. Now I'm not gonna get into the gory details, but I eventually committed a felony offense. My life had gone from bad to worse to a disaster. I mean, I was a teenage nightmare. Every part of my life was messed up. I remember being voted class clown several years in a row. I, I used humor to try and escape from my predicament. And that was just another way of saying that I was voted the class loser. And I certainly was. About a week after committing a very serious crime, two police detectives showed up in my math class. They knocked on the door, asked if Dave Fry was there. This was in my high school. They walked up to me right there in the classroom and they asked me uh, if I was David Fry. And I said that I was. And they said, David Fry, you are under arrest. And they proceeded to read me my rights. They frisked me and they handcuffed me right there in the classroom in front of all the students. And then they paraded me across the campus to humiliate me and make an example of me. Then they took me down to the juvenile prison and they threw me in jail. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I was sitting on a jail cell floor and I began to cry. I wondered how I had ever gotten to this place in my young life. I was scared, I was ashamed, I was broken. And it was there on the floor of that jail cell that I said my very first I am statement. And through tears in my eyes, I said to myself, I am better than this. I am better than this. That was it. I am better than this. I knew I was. It was probably the simplest I am statement ever said. But for me, it was a turning point. It was the start of a new life. At that moment, on my knees, I promised God that if he would get me out of this ugly mess, I would change my life. I would stop drinking. I would stop smoking. I would stop doing drugs. I would go to church every single week, and I would be a different person. And my friends, that was 30 years ago this year. Since that day, I have never touched not one single harmful substance. My lips have never touched alcohol, tobacco, especially the wacky kind, or anything like it. <laughs> and unless I've been on a plane or in an inaccessible place, 
I have been to church every single week for 30 years. Thank you. So I came home and I entered college when I was 27 years old. 27, I started college. And I received a bachelor's and a master's degree in the second ranked accounting program in the nation. It was like the Harvard of, of accounting. I married a smoking hot, wonderful woman. And if you're watching me, honey, I love you. And uh, her name is Ingrid. And I've been married to her for 20 years. And we adopted two of the most awesome kids of the world. Alina and Sterling, if you're watching, I love you guys. And I quickly sped to the top of the corporate world, serving as a senior vice president in a $500 million company. And in the year 2000, I started my own successful marketing business. And today, I'm a proud Send Out Cards distributor, and I'm financially free, and I am making a difference in this world. Okay. So, you guys are probably wondering why I told you this personal story. You know, like two people knew, now thousands know. Um, well, my road to freedom started with one simple decision, and that was made on a cold jail cell floor when I was only 17 years old. It was a decision to change something in my life. I wasn't happy with where I was at. And I made a decision to change. Just what Dave Smith said, a decision. I made a decision to change. My friends, it doesn't matter where you're at in your life. You can make a decision to change. You can decide to bring freedom in your life that you deserve. And the fact that you're here at the Send Out Cards convention tells me that many of you have already made that decision. You're already on the road to freedom. When I was in college, I had a professor, and his name was Dr. Albrecht. And he had this thing called the option theory. And he said that you should always make decisions in your life that would lead to the most options because the more options that you have, the more freedom you enjoy. Now think about that for a moment. What is freedom? Freedom is having options, the option to work where you want, when you want, with whom you want, the option to travel, the option to play, the option to spend more time with your family, and the option to give back to the less fortunate. That is freedom. That is freedom, having options. <laughs> having options. And Dr. Albrecht said that usually the road that leads to the most options is the tougher road. It's the road that has the most challenges, but in the end, it will result in a life of freedom and abundance. And consequently, it's usually the road less traveled. You know, I used to think that the reason more people didn't take that road was because of fear. Fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of, of what people would think of them. Yes, I believe that fears were the main obstacle to our success. But today, I don't believe that the main obstacles to freedom are fear or lack of talent or lack of money, no. What I believe the number one obstacle to obtaining freedom and success is, is that we settle for something good, good security, a good way of life, rather than the freedom to go freedom to come, freedom to buy, freedom to travel, and freedom to help. We settle with just the good instead of the great. So let me ask you something. Is your life too good to be great? Are you too comfortable in your good life to stretch out and create freedom for yourself? You know, sometimes the enemy of the best is the good. For 21 years, I settled for good rather than do something great. 
and make the decision to build a school in Kenya. But send out cards helped me to make that decision. It provided me with the freedom, the option to finally reach my dream of becoming a third world school builder. I know that every one of you have dreams or you wouldn't be here today. Your dreams might be to be a, a work at home mom or dad. Your dream might be to buy a house or a car that you've always wanted. My dream was to be a third world school builder. And thanks to send out cards and a decision that I made to take the road less traveled, today I am a third world school builder and I'm living out my dreams. I just got back on Tuesday from Kenya where we met with students and the parents of the school that we built. And uh, we were working on a library over there. And I want to tell you guys, I want to tell you, there is no amount of money that can compare to the feeling that you get when you serve these beautiful people. There's just no feeling. You can give me 10 eagles and it's not better than going out and serving these beautiful people. That's true. That's the truth. But I do want to become eagle. Just want to say that. <laughs> we also visited the new site where we're going to be building our second school this coming year. And I, I have a goal to, to build a school every year. So I hope that some of you will join me in building that school. I want to take some of you with me to Kenya next year. I mean, wouldn't that be cool? I mean, I'm very serious about that. I've got a vision of building a send-out card school in Africa. In fact, yes, if you're interested in sponsoring the classroom and traveling with me to Kenya next year, contact me. Because I'm serious about this. It's going to change your life forever. Okay. Now, before I finish, I want to share with you a very short story. While serving in the United States Navy, I was visiting Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. We'd been working night and day for months. And finally, one afternoon, we were allowed to go off the boat to do some rest and relaxation. Now, a couple of friends and I decided to go down to the beach several miles away from the ship. It was a super hot day. My friend stopped to get a cooler full of cold ice, uh, full of a beer, right? Big cooler of nice icy beer. So after a couple hours of snorkeling, I got really thirsty. And I realized that I had forgot to bring something to drink. Well, my Navy friends knew that I didn't drink alcohol. And even so, they offered me an ice cold beer if I wanted one. They didn't pressure me. Um, but, man, I was so thirsty that I had cotton mouth. I mean, my mouth was absolutely bone dry. And my whole body was crying out for something to drink. And I'm telling you, that beer looked so wonderful. I mean, I don't think I ever wanted something to drink in my life more than I did at that moment. I was craving it, right? And this little voice in my head was saying, go ahead and have just one beer. It's not a big deal. No one will know but my friends, and really, they don't even care whether I do or I don't. And I was so tempted to crack open a cold one that I could already taste it. But there was a voice in my head that said, David, you made a decision and a promise that you would never drink one drop of alcohol ever again, no matter what. You promised. You can't break that promise. You can't give up what you want to become in the future just because you're really thirsty right now. And I want to tell you that I decided not to drink alcohol that day. Even though, that's right, I decided not to. And even though it was inconvenient, difficult to do, and downright hard, I decided to keep my promise that I had made. And even though... I was absolutely dehydrated. I decided that my decision that I had made when I was 17 years old in that juvenile jail cell 
was more important to me than what my body was craving for at that moment. And that's the point that I want to make to you guys today. That's the point that I want to make. And Cody talked about this in the Treat Em Right seminar. Never, never give up what you want today for something that you want in the future that's a whole lot better. If you've made a decision to become financially free, then stick to it no matter what. Is it going to be hard to stay true to your decision? Yes, it will. Will it be worth it? Yes, yes, and triple yes, it's going to be worth it. There's going to be days that you don't want to make one more phone call or spend one more dime on a card or attend one more networking event or drive to one more meeting. And I'm going to tell you guys, that's going to be your moment of truth. That's going to be your moment of truth. Just like when Cody said, you know, when he was bailing out that water, that was the day he became the CEO of Send Out Card. That was his moment of truth. In that moment of truth, you got to stay true to what you want more in the future than what you want at that moment. The road less traveled is filled with these moments of truth, these small but tough decisions. And that is exactly why it's the road less traveled. So can one decision change your life forever? I say to you, yes, it can. It can change your life forever. So I invite every one of you today to join me in becoming free. I want you guys to have options. I want you to be able to buy that house, pay for college, never drive to work again, travel where and when you want, and maybe even become a third world school builder if that's what you want to do. You can be free, and it all starts with one simple decision. So make that decision today. Thank you guys. I wish you all the best of success. I love you guys. Thank you. Send out cards.